Well, welcome back to the Dales, where we're enjoying some lovely hot weather in May. And something a bit different for you today. So I had a request from one of my viewers called Ben Wu. Hi, Ben. He said, could you do a video about your bike? And I said, well, I'll give it a try. So here's a video about Rita the Beta. So this is Rita, she's a 20 year old Beta Alp 200, but before we talk about her, let's have a bit of a history lesson. The Beta company first started around 1905 in Florence, Italy, making bicycles. They didn't move into motorcycles until after World War II, when the country needed mobilising. The first bikes were small capacity commuters and sports bikes for the local market. In the 1970s and 80s, Beta started specialising in enduro and gained some success on the international stage. In the 1990s, Beta began to have an impact on the trials scene and took three consecutive world titles with Dougie Lampkin, a fellow Yorkshireman. In the mid 1990s, Beta had the idea to create a hybrid bike that would be good on both road and at trials and came up with the concept of the Alp. In its first incarnation they used an existing 252 strut motor and built a bike that was basically a trials bike with a thicker seat. It still had the tiny trials petrol tank and a peaky motor so it wasn't hugely popular. Nowadays they're a bit of a rarity. Roll on 1999 and a tie with Suzuki gave Beta access to the four stroke engine from the DR range. First the 125 and 200 units and then in 2003 the 350. The Alps have stuck to this simple formula of a carbureted four stroke Suzuki engine with Italian running gear ever since. The 350 was phased out in 2012 but the 200 is still available in dealers today. So that's the history. But what does a Beta Alp 200 offer to the trail rider? These Alps still use the Suzuki DR200 SE engine from around about the year 2000. They're air cooled and carbureted and they're as simple and reliable as they get. With only 13 horsepower it's not a thrilling engine. With gearing aimed at trail riding it's not fast. Theoretical top speed is about 60 but you'd need to be mechanically unsympathetic to maintain that sort of speed. Off-road though, it's gentle nature and easy talk make it an ideal candidate for green laning. Having an air-cooled single-cylinder engine makes things very easy to service at home. And anyone will tell you the DR200 is as tough as a blacksmith's hammer. That's why this one's still plonking along after 20 years of off-road abuse. Simple is also light. At 108 kilograms, Rita and I are about the same weight, although she weighs hers a bit better than me. She's also easy to pick up and move around. When I'm riding off road, I use peg weighting to actually turn the bike, and having a light bike makes it a lot snappier to turn. Lightness also brings rewards in fuel consumption. The 6 litre tank is good for about 100 miles of your typical off-road riding. Whatever typical off-road riding might be. Suspension is best described as either simple or crude depending on your point of view. But with the right setup it will handle most of the obstacles that green laning will throw at it. Wheels come in the classic off-road sizes of 21 inch front and 18 inch rear. That means there's a wide range of off-road rubber available. As standard they come fitted with a trial style tyre which is good on roads and rocky surfaces, but it's not too good in mud 
because they clog up easily. One other point to mention is that they come with rim locks so that the tyre won't spin on the rim when you're using low pressures. The brakes are simple two pot units front and rear. There's nothing as technical as ABS on an Alp because on the road the brakes are so weak that they're unlikely to lock a wheel. Not that good. However, when you get off road, this is a great help as you're unlikely to lock a wheel accidentally. They're good enough though. I've saved one of the Alps best features for last, and that's the seat height. At 830mm or 32.5 inches, it must be one of the lowest seat heights in an off-road bike. It makes it very easy to get on and off, even if you've got short legs like mine. It's also an unintimidating bike for a novice if they need to take a dab. And lastly, here's some of the changes I've made to Rita to make her more trail friendly. I'm always searching through my pockets to find where I've put my map. So I came up with this little zip pocket. It's just a pencil case velcroed onto the inside of the screen, but it's waterproof and it keeps everything neat. Early Alps had a mechanical speedo, but when I got Rita that had been stripped off and lost. So now she has an electronic unit mounted on a custom made alloy bracket. The left hand mirror has been removed and replaced with this mount for my action camera. This is how I shoot all my own bike footage. I'm using an Insta360 ONE RS with a 360 degree lens. When new, Rita came with a side stand on the right. I've now added an extra one on the left, so I've got options when parking on a hill. When they're new, Alps have got switches on the clutch and on the side stand to kill the engine if you try to start it in gear. These are being removed so that they don't leave me stranded at the side of the trail with a faulty switch. I don't have pillion foot pegs, so I've used the redundant brackets to hang a Suzuki toolbox. It saves having loose tools rattling around underneath the seat. So there you have it, a small video about me and my bike, the Beta Alp 200. So that's all from me and from Rita. Until the next time. <laughs>